Hello, Blythe, Evie, Joe, Jack, Callum, Cadence, Lucy, Orion, and anyone else who's listening. Welcome to Storytime. Today's story is Why the Sky is Far Away. It is a Nigerian folk tale retold by Mary Jo Gerson and illustrated by Carla Golembe. And it received the best illustrated children's book from the New York Times when it came out in 1992. A Nigerian folk tale, Why the Sky is Far Away, retold by Mary Joan Gerson, illustrated by Carla Golembe. It's dedicated to Charles, Daniel, and Jessica, and to Nigeria by the author, Mary Joan Gerson, and to my husband, Joe Edovich, whose love and encouragement have helped me to realize my visions. Special thank you to Ann Ryder and Susan Liu of Little Brown for their guidance and for being wonderful to work with. And that was by Carla Golembe, the illustrator. So the story begins. In the beginning, the sky was very close to the earth. In that time, men and women did not have to sow crops and harvest them. They did not have to prepare soup and cook rice. The children did not have to carry water from the stream or gather sticks for the fire. Anybody who was hungry just reached up, took a piece of sky, and ate it. It was delicious, too. Sometimes the sky tasted like meat stew, sometimes like roasted corn, and sometimes like ripe pineapple. There was very little work to do, so people spent their time weaving beautiful cloth, carving handsome statues, and retelling tales of adventures. And there were always festivals to prepare for. The musicians practiced, the mask makers carved their masks in secret, and everywhere the children watched the preparations in wonder. Wow, look, so they just reaching up into the sky and pulling off a piece of the sky. And it could be like watermelon or carrots or pineapple or blueberries or peanuts or eggplant or strawberries or bananas. That's amazing. And look, there they're preparing for festivals. They're carving statues. They're weaving beautiful cloth. Look at the bird in the tree. There's a monkey in the tree. There's children watching how they're preparing for a festival. Boy, look at the beautiful illustration. The king of the land was called the Oba, and his court was magnificent. At the royal palace was a team of servants whose only work was to cut and shape the sky for ceremonies. Wow, look at that. How they're cutting and shaping the sky into, um, it looks like a fish, some kind of a tree maybe, a carrot, that is amazing. But the sky was growing angry because people were wasteful. Most often they took more than they could possibly eat and threw the leftovers onto garbage heaps. I am tired of seeing myself soured and spoiled on every rubbish bin in the land, brooded the sky. Oh boy, 
They're just taking more than they need and throwing it away, wasting the sky. That is not respectful, is it? Look at the mother holding her baby. So one morning at sunrise, the sky turned very dark. Thick black clouds gathered over the Oba's palace, and a great voice boomed out from above. Oba, mighty one, your people have wasted my gifts. I am tired of seeing myself on heaps of garbage everywhere. I warn you, do not waste my gifts any longer, or they will no longer be yours. The Oba, in terror, sent messages, messengers carrying the sky's warning to every corner of the land. In every village, people were told about the sky's unhappiness. The children were warned never to take a piece of sky unless they were truly hungry. So do you see the messengers are, are going everywhere to let people know that they need to be respectful of the sky and, and stop wasting it. People were very, very careful, that is, for a while. Then the time arrived for the greatest festival of the year. It was the festival that celebrated the power of the Oba. The most important palace dancers performed all through the night, and the Oba himself, in ceremonial robes, danced for his subjects. By the fifth day, there was rejoicing in every home and on every street. The Oba knew, though, that with the dancing and merriment, people might forget the sky's warning. So he made sure no one took more sky than he or she absolutely needed. Oh, look at the Oba dancing. It's a big festival. Now, there was a woman in this kingdom who was never satisfied. She could barely move when she wore all the weighty coral necklaces her husband had bought her, but she still craved more necklaces. She had 11 children of her home, of her own, but she felt her house was empty. And most of all, Adiz loved to eat. On the very last night of the celebration, Adiz and her husband were invited to the Oba's palace. There they danced and danced and ate well past midnight. Hmm. There is Adiz with all of her coral necklaces, eating watermelon dreaming about more food. What an evening it was, Adiz thought later, standing in her own garden again. How I wish I could relive tonight. The drumming I heard, the riches I saw, the food I ate. She looked up at the sky and hoping to taste again the cocoa yams and meat stew the sky had offered, she took a huge piece to eat. She had only finished one third of it when she could swallow no more. Uh-oh. What have I done, wailed Adis. I cannot throw this away. Oh, Tolo, she screamed, calling her husband. Come and finish this piece of sky for me. Her husband, exhausted from dancing all night and stuffed with the sky he had eaten at the Oba's palace, could take only two bites. Wake the children, screamed Adisi. Now the children had spent all night at a masquerade and party after their dinner, and most of them were still too full to even nipple at their mother's piece of sky. 
Oh no, look, people are just too full. She wants someone to eat it because she can't throw it away. But people are holding their stomachs and saying they've had enough. Yikes. The neighbors were called and the neighbor's neighbors were called, but a Dees still held in her hand a big chunk of sky. What does it matter, she said finally. One more piece of sky on a rubbish heap. And just to make sure it didn't matter, she buried the leftover in the garbage bin at the back of her house. Suddenly, the ground shook with thunder. Lightning creased the sky above the Oba's palace, but no rain fell. This guy is angry, isn't he? Oba, mighty one, boomed a voice from above. Your people have not treated me with respect. Now I will leave you and move far away. But what will we eat? cried the Oba. How will we live? You must learn how to plow the land and gather crops and hunt in the forest, answered the sky. Perhaps through your own labor, you will learn not to waste the gifts of nature. Oh, so the sky is moving far away so they can't just reach up and break a piece of it. No one in the land slept very well that night. The rising sun uncovered the heads of men and women and children peering over rooftops and through windows, straining to see if the sky had really left them. It truly had. It had sailed upward, far out of their reach. Wow, way up went the sky. From that day onward, men and women and children had to grow their own food. They tilled the land and planted crops and harvested them. And from above them rested the sky, distant and blue, just as it is today. Wow. So the sky was giving them this wonderful gift, but they weren't using it with respect. So the, God, the sky went further away. And now they have to work for everything they eat. This story is at least 500 years old. It was first told in Bini, the language of the Bini tribe of Nigeria, which has existed more than 800 years. The Bini people live today, along with many other tribes, in what is now the country of Nigeria. How interesting it is that the Bini people long ago began teaching their children to respect the earth and sky. Today, we are very concerned about caring for our planet. We now see, as the wise Beanie did then, that the future of nature and its gifts rests in our own hands. The end. So we all have to take good care of our earth and all the gifts the earth gives us. This is a um, is the back cover, and it shows that it was the New York Times Best Illustrated Book of the Year, and it's, the reviews say that it is important for us to remember not to waste what the earth has given us. So I hope you will always remember that to treat the earth with respect and to be grateful for what the earth gives us. Tomorrow, we will be reading The Berenstain Bears and Too Much Te Teasing, written and illustrated by Stan and Jan Berenstain. 
I think you'll like it. I hope you are all taking good care of yourselves. You are loving on each other and always loving yourselves just the way you are. And remember that I love each one of you to the moon and back. We will be back tomorrow for the Berenstein Bears and too much teasing. Bye-bye.